all so very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for being here tonight. And thank you so much for being Team Beasley. I am so grateful that we have been on this journey together. And I want to start, hold on, y'all. This, this is the teleprompter. Okay. <laughs> I really do want to start uh, with a word of thanks. Thank you to everyone who helped to get this campaign to the finish line. Thank you also very much, all the volunteers who knocked doors and <laughs> the folks who made phone calls and drove people to the polls. I am so grateful. So, so grateful that I've met so many awesome folks along the way. And I give my deepest, deepest thanks to Team Beasley. I thank my husband, Kurt, whose partnership has been essential in this journey and whose birthday we celebrate tonight. <laughs> happy, happy, happy birthday, Kurt. I love you dearly. And to our sons, Matthew and Thomas, who inspire me every single day. I could not have done it without the support of my men, and I love them so, so very much. and very, very thankful. A few minutes ago, I called Senator-elect Bud to congratulate him. And I offered him my support and encouraged him to stand in the tradition of our state to be an independent leader that puts North Carolina first. And I hope he will. I hope he will. I am so proud of the race that we ran. I'm proud that all along we stayed true to our mission, that this race would be about the people and not politics. And even when others didn't, we believed in North Carolina. And I still do. This isn't the outcome that we wanted, but we have made history in North Carolina. And tonight I'm thinking of those who blazed trails before me so that I can reach this moment with you all here this evening. I'm thinking of my late mother, Lou Beasley, who showed me the importance of public service, of working for justice for all, and for standing for what's right. She was an amazing example and amazing woman she knew the importance of staying the course and valuing the right to vote. My mother was granted the right to vote 57 years ago by the passage of the Voting Rights Act. And 57 years later, the work to make voting truly accessible continues. I'm thinking of my granddaddy Clarence and my grandmother Mimi, Rebecca, from Alabama who married very young and searched for a better life for their family. With 76 cents in his pocket, Granddaddy Clarence hopped a train to Nashville, Tennessee with dreams of a better future in his heart. He worked on the railroad all of his life, believing that for all of his sacrifice, his children and grandchildren would have it better. Granddaddy Clarence and Mimi believed firmly in the American dream. And despite the challenges they faced and the injustices they weathered, my grandparents worked hard to build a better future for their children and grandchildren. I am my grandparents' American dream. <laughs> Regardless of the result, I remain resolved to fight for our beloved state. Yes, because North Carolina is worth fighting for. Yes. 
and we are worth fighting for. Because our American dreams are worth pursuing. This election was never about the names on the ballot. It's about you, the people of the state, and your future. And after two decades as a judge and chief justice of the Supreme Court of North Carolina, I ran for the United States Senate for a simple reason. I love this state. But I've seen how Washington has failed people here. And over the last 19 months, I met North Carolinians in all 100 counties. You've shared with me your struggles, from jobs that don't pay the rent, to medication that costs too much, to loved ones who need health care but couldn't afford it, to small business owners who are the backbone of our economy and who need leaders with a backbone to do what's best for them. I've spoken with farmers who are paying way too much for fertilizer and for gas for farm equipment. I've heard from those who've been fearful of the threats to our democracy. And you've shared with me your hopes, good schools for your children, regardless of your zip code, safe communities to live in, opportunities to prosper and thrive. I've seen time and again what I already knew. The people of our state are tough, resilient, and generous. And I heard from so many of you who wanted Washington to set aside the special interests and corporate donors and instead focus on helping our families, nurturing our communities. But while Washington focuses on pointing fingers, the people of North Carolina have to point forward. Because I, like all of you, still believe in a future where our rights are protected and our freedoms fulfilled, where seniors can retire with dignity and prescription drugs don't break the bank, where people can work one, not two or three jobs to support their families and that you don't have to go to college to get that job, where your leaders work for you not themselves and not their corporate donors and special interest groups, where an American dream is a possibility for tomorrow and for all of us, not just a story of the past for some. And while I am indeed disappointed, I am not defeated. No, mm -mm. no you won't. <laughs> While I certainly wish for a different outcome, I am not leaving the fight because the issues that I ran on are too important and an election doesn't determine my voice or my continued... or my continued commitment to fight for each and every one of you. Progress in this country has never been promised. It always takes time. And always in the face of injustice and adversity, we continue to fight. By taking up the fight, we always make progress. It is because of this that I stand before you as the first African-American woman to be nominated to the United States Senate from North Carolina and the first African-American woman to serve as Chief Justice of the Supreme Court of North Carolina. This fight doesn't only make my dreams possible, it makes our dreams possible. And with unprecedented attacks on our rights and democracy hanging in the balance, we just cannot afford to give up the fight. So I thank each and every one of you for your hard work and your commitment for the last two years. <laughs> I am so filled with gratitude and hope for having been in this fight alongside each and every one of you and all of you that came here this evening. I thank you so very much. 
the fight continues because progress will continue. Thank you all so very much, and may God bless North Carolina and this country. I'm bringing out my family. Come on out, Kurt, Matthew, and Thomas.